Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. In this video I want to discuss the feasibility for AF King to get the new Halloween mount. This reanimated chariot with the insignia bonuses of Enchantress Hex and Warlord's motivation really good for damage dealers. But you shall only see those bonuses with module 27 coming most likely November the 7th in 14 days and 23 hours from now. Additionally, I want to address a bug some of you may be experiencing where you can't equip that mount yet. And then also the feasibility of how long is it going to take you to get this mount? Is it even worth it to do so? Are there alternatives you could get instead by spending maybe a little bit of Zen or Astral Diamonds rather than hours and hours of grinding? So first of all, let's start out with the announcement that some of you are running into issues that are preventing you from opening your reanimated chariot mount. Basically, you're not being able to equip it. I personally didn't have this issue and on some characters you might not have that issue as well because if you have the old reanimated Destrier horse you will run into that error where you cannot equip this new reanimated chariot. They are tracking the issue and it will most likely be fixed with module 27 here in a few weeks says the executive producer Brett Norton. So just save your mounts and you'll be able to equip them with the next update. So let's move to how can you get this mount and whether or not AFKing is a feasible strategy. Well what you need to get the mound is these masquerade tokens you need a whopping thousand of them and as i've discussed the fastest way in order to do so and it can well be the easiest way is to get these charms from these pumpkins then you go and you hand them in at these npcs and they give you a bag of illusionist streets if you have more than five of these charms you'll get what we had there the error where you cannot pick up another pumpkin. So you basically need to go in a route on Protector's Enclave, handing in the charms to the NPCs, picking up another pumpkin, speaking to the next NPC, another NPC here, another pumpkin here, with an NPC just here, one that walks around over there. We can grab this pumpkin first. And you just go round and round Protector's Enclave and you'll find a route which suits you best. Just be aware again, you cannot have more than five charms in your inventory or you'll get an error and you can't pick up more. So it's a balance. I personally like to go on a route, which is basically where I'm going to draw my mouse. You'll start over here, pick up a pumpkin, go along, talk to an NPC, pick up another pumpkin, potentially keep going along this way. And you just get the pumpkin, speak to the NPCs, you have some wandering ones here. You go around here, get some more pumpkins, go up here, then go around and up through here. You'll get some more pumpkins by these steps around here. Speak to this guy, just Continue over to here, go down here and around and you just continue on this outer circle. And that's what I generally take for the best strategy. That's what suits me. The problem, the big issue with this is that if you get some random person who interacts with your pumpkin before you get there, you're kind of screwed because there will be no pumpkin there, meaning you're missing out on a charm, meaning the whole thing just takes longer. So there's there's a trick to this. Either you go around this route that you are quick enough that by the time the pumpkins reappear again, you're already there picking up the pumpkin. That can be the easiest solution in a hot populated area, but it means you have to get ahead of everybody. I recommend either doing this farm at a downtime where you're in an instance where there's not many people. You can probably forget about that pumpkin. It's a bit too annoying to get to. There's much easier ones at these steps and we're already full. So you need to find an instance that's empty so that you aren't going to be contesting people with those pumpkins. And at a time where there's, again, not going to be many people, you will be having a greater chance at finding an instance that's empty. But the alternative is AFK farming to get these charms. Now, you won't necessarily skip the thing where you will speak to these NPC handing the charms. You will just be skipping the pumpkins because otherwise you'll be losing out on 
a ton of these goodie bags because you can go trade in your charms directly at the NPC for masquerade tokens. It's just the exchange rate is only one to one, as you see here, which is way worse than getting these bags of illusionist goods, which give two or three tokens. So on average, it's about 2.5. So with going AFK, the best place is here within Icewind Dale, where you can go and kill these enemies every 15 seconds or so. They continually spawn. You can find that again in the Icewind Dale here, you need to go to Karkonic. You'll probably need to pick up one of the faction dudes. We'll just go there real quick. You need to speak to this 10 towns guy representative and join his team, or you speak to the Arcane Brotherhood and get her faction. Sometimes you won't have a choice because so many people are already in one faction. That was to do with PVP that nobody really does anymore. But then you go to the Dwarven Valley here and you need to head down to this section. Now, once here, you'll find these like trolls praying around this thing, and there are multiple of them. And what you want to do is just AFK there with a companion that's going to do some decent damage. My character, I'm using Ksuna. You can use like Mystic Fiora, and the best one is like Regis. You need a companion that's going to kill them nice and quickly, and then once they're dead, you pick up the loot. Make sure you have enough inventory. So you can't go completely AFK because you have to pick up the loot before it disappears, which I'm actually not 100% sure on the timer, but in order to get not get logged out, you need to come back every 15 minutes, a little bit earlier than that, to make sure you aren't getting logged out. Do something and then you can go AFK again. Basically just pick up all your loot. Now my rate is generally about 30 of these charms an hour. Yeah, you might think that's a bit slow and it is. 30 charms per hour is 75 masquerade tokens if you go around trading those charms at these NPCs to get these packs. So that would be 75 tokens. Alternatively, you're trading them one for one and thus an hour is 30 tokens. So that would take you a long time. And if you do go and trade in all of your charms, which is much easier because you're not contested at these NPCs, they just have your own little cooldown so you aren't competing with other players you'll be able to trade them in nice and quickly so that would take us just over 13 hours of being afk to get a thousand of these tokens for the mount so yes afk is feasible it's just you can't fully afk you have to come back every 15 minutes, pick up your loot, make sure you aren't getting logged out and that somebody's not contesting you. If somebody contests you here and their companions a little bit faster than yours, you won't get any drops. So be aware of that. And that can be pretty triggering and annoying if somebody does go and contest you. Don't be that jerk who does. There are a good few of these things, so you should be fine. And you can, of course, AFK elsewhere, but this is usually the best spot. You'll get the highest rates because they spawn every 15 seconds, whereas in other areas, they might be only 30 seconds or even two minutes for the enemies to appear. So yeah, with AFKing, it'll take you about 13 hours. Without AFKing, if you're quick enough, you get a decent instance. You can get a thousand of those tokens within an hour by doing this pumpkin method and speaking to the NPCs to trade them in. Like, yeah, at just an hour, if you're quick enough and you aren't being contested, you aren't having people stealing your pumpkins. But ultimately, is it is that time worth investing for you? Is it worth finding a time where there's nobody online who can contest you? Well, that depends on the mount and its bonuses. Again, for a damage dealer, it's giving Enchanter's Hex and Warlord's Motivation. Again, only with the next module. Right now, it will only have a Cursed Resolve and Lionhearts. But as soon as the module hits, the update comes, you'll be able to use Warlord's Motivation in Channer's Hex. And this is the previous server here, and this is somewhat of a setup I would use on a damage dealer in boss fights. You're having two Tacticians, Channer's Hex, and two Warlord's Motivations. You could have, if you need stats, particularly if you're not endgame yet, an Executioner's Covenant and a Mender's Covenant. And depending on the class, you might not even want to run Enchanter's Hex. Even on a wizard where you can abuse it with, let's say, the Ray of Frost, 
it's not that great in let's say the latest trial you can see dealing abysmal damage here only 900k versus 800 million yeah it dealt like no damage in the new trial because you generally want to be using your chilling cloud to trigger your glowing flames to deal all that damage against all the ads there's a lot of area damage required in that fight and so single target not so necessary and enchanter's hex is only going to trigger on the lieutenants and the boss a lot of the damage otherwise is coming from just the ads but outside of that content it's going to be very good in tara the mad mage and zariel but again they might fix it they might fix it so it doesn't trigger off ray of frost as it's undoubtedly by the tooltip not intended because this says encounters really powers not um at wills but who knows they may very well leave it like that at least for the few weeks or months before they decide to ever change it but ultimately this is what i would generally go on a dps at least on a wizard tacticians you want kind of two of them you can even go for a third if you have the mount but you need to have the demon wings the hand and the butterfly i think a lot of you probably don't have the hand and the dark butterfly as those were exclusive limited time available demon wings on the other hand you can buy from the auction house or get from the lockbox warlords you can get from the drider form this chariot this was why you would get it the sylph and the tiger the hex you can get from the drider form the chariot with the star there meaning you can use it with the preferred insignia so you will get the extra 100 item level there that's why this is also really good if you're going to be using that bonus and otherwise you could use the sil for that the goose and the tiger and then you could have artificial persuasion on a three slot mount you won't get one on a four slot mount and otherwise you could use a second warlord's motivation or an executioner's covenant or even a mender's covenant if you need even more stats for me i will most likely be going with two tacticians as i have those mounts in the live server two warlords motivation and then i don't know about enchanter's hex just yet if it does get fixed to properly trigger on encounter powers it'll be pretty good on a wizard with all of our encounter powers having like control effects most of them including our daily powers so that additional damage from that will add up it won't be that much probably like still one percent but it's better than like nothing. Alternatively, again, we could use some extra stats, but I'm already maxed out on everything when I'm in a party, at least a coordinated party. So I do not need more ratings when I'm buffed up and everything. So there's zero point me having like an executioner's covenant for those ratings. Additionally, you're just reducing your defensive stats. And an artificer, I'm not sure. You want to have your encounter powers for the artifact call, but with tacticians, you can generally do that pretty easily. With looking at this, you don't need the chariot. If you have the sylph, it'll fill in instead of that. If I wanted that hex, I could get the tiger from the Zen market or have the goose. The tiger is 1,500 Zen without a discount. Make sure to get a discount. You can get, I believe, 30% off with a coupon from invoking. And you'd get that down to a thousand, nearly a thousand Zen, and that be account wide. You can claim it on all your characters, and it'll have the bonuses exactly like the Chariot of Warlord's Motivation and Enchanter's Hex. So, yeah, you could save yourself the grind and use that instead. But if you wanted to use, like I'm using here, we already have the Sylph, the Drider form, you'd need like that goose. And if you didn't want to get the Sylph, which is very expensive, you could have the Tiger instead. So the cheapest option is to get this chariot. You just need to play the game a bit and you'll get it. I say it's pretty worth it, but it's not a must have. There are alternatives. Like we said, again, this setup could have the Tiger here instead. And you'd then need like the sylph wings here. Instead of the sylph wings, we could use the tiger. Or you could even have the goose from back within the April Files event. If you want to see my document with all the different four stop mounts and what you can use, there's a link in the video description below. It's been updated just recently with all the new mounts and the upcoming bonuses on those. So hopefully this has been somewhat insightful to you guys. A massive thank you to all these channel members for their added support. You can support me for as little as one year a month by clicking the join button down below. So we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.